Traders are the gatekeepers inside of Ghosts of Tabor. They can be the difference between you going into a raid with a Dinky Makarov versus a Barrett 50 Cal. Today I'm here to show you the best and fastest way to level up your traders, not only from a perspective of XP, which you need to complete missions to accomplish, but also money, which you'll also need to advance to the next level. These are the two parts that the video will be split up into, so that way I can give you all the fastest way to level up your traders, and you can start buying the guns you want today. And without keeping you waiting any further, let's roll into it. Here we're going to start at the main kiosk. The important thing to note is that you want to be able to get missions that can stack on top of each other that you can utilize to be able to level things up by just performing one action every time, and I'll show you here what I mean. But first, it's important to note what you should be leveling up exactly. The only traders that you should try to level up in order of importance are Spectre, then Minty, then Shiro. But let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about so you can see all the different missions that you should accept in order to level up your traders the fastest. Now, when I said you want to focus on a single action to level up your traders, you should focus on killing either NPCs, which in this game are called Phoenixes, or players. Killing phoenixes are very easy, but with most of these missions, you're going to need to kill more of them to sometimes get less XP than you would for killing players, but obviously players are going to be a lot more difficult to kill in some respects. Obviously, you're going to see some people that are just running around, they have no idea how to play the game or what they're doing, those are just easy targets, but if you're really running and gunning after players, you are going to meet decked out people with an alpha AK and a drum mag. So, long story short, you should be trying to stack up missions inside of the same trader that involve killing players, as well as doing them for other traders that involve killing players. So whenever you kill one player, it will help you level up for five different missions at the same time. So here I'm going to show you the top missions to be able to stack up if you're going to kill players or if you're going to kill phoenixes. And then I'll be able to show you guys exactly how that translates into how many kills you should be getting to be able to level up these traders. The missions that you should accept for Spectre are killing five players with only dying three times and being able to kill 15 players over the course of five raids. Now, I wouldn't advise accepting a third Spectre mission because of how I'm going to try to lay out these missions for you later on. But if you do want to actually accept a third one, Keep in mind that you are all going to get a very small amount for what you actually do kill out there if you accept one of these missions at the bottom for just killing players generically. But I will also tell you that if you happen to be skilled with a bolt action sniper rifle like the AWM or the hunter rifle that you can actually get double the XP for just using a bolt action if you happen to be more skilled with a bolt action sniper rifle. Following our trend of trying to make sure we kill the most players possible, let's try to level up Minty. You'll kill 5 players in 3 raids, and accept the mission to kill 10 players within 7 lives. And lastly, you want to accept one mission from Shiro, this mission right here for killing 10 players over the course of 3 raids. And when you combine all these wonderful missions together, you've got a mission to kill 5 people for Spectre, 15 from Spectre, 5 from Minty, 10 from Minty, and 10 from Shiro. For trying to rack up player kills, I would recommend going to Island. On the Island, you have the potential for 11 other players to be able to spawn in there with you, as opposed to Silo where you only have five other players. But if you're uncomfortable with Island and you want to know how to survive it better, I did have a ultimate tutorial for Ghosts of Tabor that I'll be linking at the top of the screen here, as well as at the end of this video, so you'll be able to check that out in case you need some extra tips. Now, like I said, you do get to kill less players than NPCs and you'll get more XP for doing it, but I know not all of you want to be able to play the same way, so let me show you the best way to be able to get XP if you're only going to focus on killing the phoenixes inside this game. Let's start with Spectre again. The two missions to grab is the one to be able to kill 25 phoenix with an smg in five raids and the one to kill 15 phoenix with an smg now let's head over to minty grab the mission that requires you to kill 12 phoenixes and grab the mission that requires you to kill 15 within three raids instead of accepting the one for killing 12 phoenixes you could accept the one for five raids if you really wanted to but obviously the one for 12 phoenixes in my opinion i believe is easier mainly because it's not restricted to a time frame you don't have to go on five raids you could complete killing 12 phoenixes in a single raid if you wanted to. And lastly, go to Shiro and accept the mission for killing 10 phoenixes with the ammo of your choosing. You'll get the same amount of XP if you're using FMJ, AP, or Tracer rounds. And there you have it, here's my 5 mission listing for leveling up the 3 important traders if you're going to go after the NPCs of this game. Kill 25 phoenixes with an SMG, kill 15 phoenix with the same SMG, kill 12 phoenix, 
kill 15 in three raids, and then be able to kill 10 with FMJ rounds or AP if you're using that instead. Kind of like how on the last one I recommended that you go to Island, on here I would recommend that you go to Silo. Silo is very close quarters, there's still a good amount of NPCs, although there aren't as many as there are on Island, but there are enough to be able to get the missions done, and you won't have as many players spawning in to get in your way. Plus with an SMG being a close quarters weapon, you really don't want to be having to shoot somebody a quarter of the way across Island with an SMG. Also, like I said earlier in the video, you don't need to level up all your traders to max, you only need to level them up to the max of what you need. And even for some of them, like Shiro, aren't useful to level up to max level. With Shiro, you unlock everything that you need from him at level 3, so there's really no need to go to 4, let alone 5. Or for example, with Spectre, maybe you don't care about getting the AK Alpha, or the Barret, or the Drum Mags, maybe you're fine with just being able to get to level 4 and all the benefits that it holds. So definitely pay attention to what you want to unlock as you're leveling up. I also additionally took the time to crunch the numbers because I am a numbers guy to be able to tell you exactly what you need per kill to be able to level up these traders with the missions that I chose for you. So for example, with the first one on Spectre, you get 4800 XP for being able to complete 5 kills, you'll get 960 XP per kill if you complete that mission, and then with Spectre, if you complete that second one, you'll get 18,500 for getting 15 kills, which is 1.2 per kill, it's going to give you a total of 2100, almost 2200, for completing these missions. Because of course with the Spectre one, for example, as soon as you complete 5 kills, you can turn that one in while you're still working on the other one for 15. So, you know, theoretically you could complete the 4800 one 3 times while you complete the one for 15 kills once. And of course that's going to flow into your goal. The goal of course being the max amount of XP that you need to be able to reach max rank for Spectre, Minty, and to at least get to level 3 for Shiro to get all of their items. But exactly this this right here is exactly why I told you guys to be able to get missions that flow into one another. Because if you look at this chart, you don't have to individually get 148 kills for Spectre and then 221 for Minty, etc. If you follow it based off of what I said, once you get 221 kills, Granted, there are some exceptions, you know, there's going to be rollovers because you're going to complete one mission, part with your raid, maybe get some other kills for another one, etc. But theoretically, as soon as you get around 221 kills, probably more, you'll be able to get the max level for Minty, Spectre, and level 3 for Shiro. But as I said in the beginning of the video, you don't only need XP to level up, you also need money. Lots and lots of money. And as you have what I believe to be the best way to collect money for these traders so you can get these levels the fastest. As I'm sure all of you are aware, the traders pay the most for what they sell. So if you're going to sell a gun, you sell it to Spectre because they sell guns. If you're going to sell ammo, you sell it to Shiro. If you're going to have any kind of armor you sell to Minty. I would recommend doing quick runs into Silo, going in, killing the Phoenixes, and taking their ammo as well as every mag that they drop. Every time that you kill a Phoenix, there's four mags that you can collect, one inside the gun and three additional ones that drop. Even if you kill the Phoenix and you're not going to loot his primary because you already have a more expensive primary that you're planning to sell, at least loot their mags and try to fill your backpack to the brim with as many mags as you can. Keep in mind that you can also fit pistols inside of your backpack. Even the dinky little Makarov sells for $2,000 alone. And while selling a magazine for $200 may seem pretty slow, keep in mind that each Phoenix, like I said, drops four, and you can just stack all these into your backpack every which way. Additionally, there are also four different armor locations inside Silo, two for helmets and two for chest rigs outside of the purple room. If you go into Silo every single time as a naked run, ideally you'll be able to leave with holding a primary in each hand, having a primary on your chest, having a secondary in your holster, having secondaries as well as mags inside your backpack, having a brand new chest rig and a brand new helmet. And keep in mind that spending money doesn't hurt because whether you buy or sell, you are leveling up that trader. For example, if you sell them $30,000 worth of goods, but you buy $20,000 worth of goods back, you level up that trader by $50,000. One thing that helped me level up Spectre was just buying the guns that I love. I love having the AWM for Sniper, so I bought it, and in doing so, I got to not only have the gun that I love, but I was able to advance Spectre by over $60,000. And while the methods that I recommended for being able to level up these traders may be easier to have for newer players, there is another way. You could also just go into these raids and just have fun. Fun. Go ahead and get some guns, get some of your own armor, go in there, try to kill players, loot their stuff, and you can actually get a decent amount of money if they have good gear to sell, but that's not always guaranteed. The fastest yet most expensive method that I would recommend for leveling up these traders is buying and then selling immediately. Minty is the one that I would definitely recommend using this for to a certain extent if you have the spare money to do so. Mainly because of the lack of looting potential for chest rigs, they only possibly spawn in in certain spots and then as soon as you put one on your chest, you're immediately having to hold them in your hand and 
you can't exactly shoot someone with a chest rig. So for example, if you wanted to level up Minty, you could go into the Tabor Market, go ahead and buy some chest rigs. As soon as you get them inside your safe house in the trade room, sell them immediately. It will add progress towards your level on both ends. However, you do sell for considerably less than what you buy it for. So it is going to cost you some good money. So the long and short of it for the money end, go in there, try to build up as much money as you can from looting guns, ammo, try to get some armor, but then use that money buildup that you get from selling to Spectre and Shiro to help you along with Minty because you're not going to get as fast with the money progression on Minty. But that is the best and fastest way to level up in Ghosts of Tabor. I hope this was able to help you out. I'm going to be leaving some boxes playing over here in the corners with other videos that I've uploaded in Ghosts of Tabor, guides, comedy, etc. And I'm going to be putting out some new videos very soon about things like where to find the purple key cards and other tips that might be able to help you survive out there. And I hope that you live long enough to see my next tale spun for Ghosts of Tabor. Have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you next time.